Hello everyone. So this is kind of like an unplanned video. So what you see in front of me is a tote bag. Okay. It's a canvas tote bag. It's a blank that I've drawn on. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this design. And I at first didn't plan on making this video. So because of that, you see me filming the video halfway through with lots of pencil mark on this blank canvas tote bag already. So what I'm going to tell you briefly now is how I went about drawing this design with pencil first and then going over with ink. All right. So the ink that I'm using is an Arteza fabric marker. And the fabric marker that you see me using was bought a long time ago. So they don't carry that anymore, but they do carry a different version of it. I will put a link of all the things that I use for making this in the description of this video so you can decide what you want to do, all right? So first of all, what I did was, okay, this is a Neural Lotus. Okay, well, not actually a Neural Lotus, but it's a way of drawing. It's, you've seen me using the Neural Lotus method of drawing a Lotus in my other neural art videos and i've used that same idea and mo and modified some of the motif in there to adapt to drawing this so it's kind of like what i wanted was like a lotus rising up from either the clouds or the ocean or the sea okay so it's kind of like i combine some zentangle ideas and neural lotus idea into one all right so what i did was first i decided how big i wanted the neural lotus to be like the maximum size with this compass okay well you can use any compass but this is a very nice precision compass i will put the link in the description in case you would like to chase one so what i did was i measured the the maximum length or the maximum size of the circle i want this compass to be and oh yeah before i did that i kind of found the center of this whole tote bag before i went about doing it and i would say that after that i found the center but i did not use the center okay because I didn't want this whole neural lotus to be in the center of this entire bag because I want it to be a little bit further up, like it's rising above the clouds kind of idea. So I kind of measured how big I wanted the lotus to be. Okay. So I did move like slightly up. So and then and that's because I was measuring like, okay, where do I want the top of the lotus to be? Okay, so you first have to decide where you want the top of the lotus to be with the compass. And that's when you mark the center and then you draw a guiding circle for the maximum size of your lotus. All right. And then after that, you will draw all your guiding circles for all the petals. You will, you will see those marks in the video that I'm recording, although I've already done it. That's why I'm explaining how you do it here in advance so that you don't feel like you missed anything. I mean, you have missed it. And it was like, this was kind of impromptu, like, well, why don't I record it, record the whole process 
and then show how it's done. And but then I couldn't record the other parts because it was already done. So now I'm explaining to you how I started it. So I started it by figuring how big I want the lotus to be. Okay. And then I knew that I wanted my ocean or ocean of clouds. Okay, whatever you want to call it, to be about a third of the way up this size of this entire coat back. Okay, so you kind of get an idea of okay where you want the cloud or the sea of clouds or your ocean to end. Then you kind of draw a line across. Okay, you can see the pencil line here still. I didn't do a very good job of erasing it. Okay, you can see it here. So it's about one third from the bottom of one third from the bottom of the tote bag. All right, and then after that, you have to decide where you want the lotus to go by deciding what is the maximum size of the lotus. Okay, so in this case, this was the maximum size of the lotus here. You can see. Okay, so you would have to, after you found the center, you kind of have, you have to adjust accordingly, like, okay, and then you make sure that, you know, it's kind of still in the center of the bag, not the exact center, but, you know, the lotus would be like, equidistance from the sides and some distance from the top and you don't want the lotus to come right up to the edge either okay so after you've decided that you draw your circles and then you draw the concentric circles within your circle for all the petals all these different parts Okay, I didn't draw any guidelines for this except, you know, finding out where the center is and all that. And even that, some of it, I eyeballed it. All right. And then you would have to decide, like, okay, so for this here, this row of petals here, what I did was I find the size for this all right this one here okay once i've decided that okay this is the radius at which i wanted this group of petals to be i drew the circle for it okay and then with that same radius do not change it you mark, okay, from one point, any point you want, okay? It doesn't have to be pointed like that. It could be slightly slanted, whatever. You decide how you want your lotus to be pointing, okay? One, how you want these row of petals to be pointing. And of course, all your following rows of petals will form. You can have more rows of petals than just these two that I have. Okay, basically you have the center row number one of petals and then row number two of petals. And then I, I thought of this as like, you know, the lotus leaf side. So you can decide how many rows of petals you want. For me, I've decided that I only wanted two, a center and two rows of petals. And that was it. I wanted to keep it simple. Okay. So. What I was going to say was the first row of petals, you decide where you want the point to be. So for this case, I want it to be on that same vertical axis. So I started from here. So from this point to this point is the same radius from, as from the center to this point. So if you did this and mark on that circle that you've drawn for this row of petals, you should have six points. Okay, you will have six points because that's the mathematical geometry of it. Like 
for every circle you use that radius, you will have six points. And we draw a line from that intersection down to the center to this. So it's like this triangle here. Okay. This 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 triangle, this angle here is going to be 60 degrees. Is it's just a property of the geometry. Okay, there's no questions about that unless you change the radius for your marking. If it's the same radius, you will get 60 degrees. And that's why you will get six marks. Exactly the same. Now you will have instances where your marks are going to be slightly off, which I have encountered, and you will see in the video. Or maybe not, I'm not sure if, if it was filmed. What you do, and, and that's because of how stretchy the, can, the, the fabric is. So if it slightly stretches, then it's going to go off. So it doesn't matter, you can just because it's still pencil marking, you can erase it with the eraser and then remark it again. That's not a problem, okay? It's only a problem after you've marked everything down in ink. And that's when the problem will start. Okay, so enough of that. I'm gonna put this compass aside now. So and then you will see me drawing the paddles using a French curve. Okay, you don't have to, you can do freehand. Okay, what I did was I marked, I marked, uh, and uh, I put a marking on the French curve where I wanted to start the curve at, and then I just drew it. Okay, so from every pedal, I started from that same marking on the curve. And then I just drew that, that line. Okay, next. How did I do this? Okay, how did I do this part? I did that with this instrument here. Okay, so what this does is it's an it's called an iris, and you can draw a circle by changing stuff like this. Okay, and this is what I did. So for each of this circle, I just fix the size and just do this. Now, having said that, you don't actually have to use an instrument like this. Okay, you can use something like a circular cap like this. Okay, obviously this is not the same size, but you can find something that is the size that you want. Okay, no matter what size it is. It could be the, the the cup, you know, the mouth of the a, a glass or a cup, okay, or something, anything that is circular, and then you can just trace that, okay. You don't have to pay the price of buying an iris. Obviously, this is very useful. Again, I would have this in the link in 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 the description. I will have the link to this in the description in case you're interested. All right. So after that, I've traced every single one of them, like one by one. Okay. And I left the first row blank on purpose. And then I drew this. Okay. And then you would have the design, the guides, the design for drawing, and ink, all these. You can decide what colors you want. I use these colors because I wanted this side to be like, you know, the sun rising. So you know how the sun is like going from yellow, orange to duller colors because the center of it's really bright. So I did this. And then on the back of it, I wanted something darker, you know, like evening, midnight colors and all that. So I did the exact same thing for the pencils. And then I just drew everything else with ink. So with some 
difference in the design that was just design choices you can do the same too okay like i know the center for this i did it slightly different all right so and then before you draw the ink part of all this i encourage you to put like at least something that is stiff okay or at least something that's waterproof like a sheet of plastic okay now remember it must be straight otherwise you're going to have difficulty drawing all these lines okay so what i did was and you will see that i put a board a, a piece of what is the mdf board inside here like a small piece of it as i'm drawing it helps a lot now if you don't have mdf board you can use corrugated cardboard they're stiff enough or even any piece of cardboard or cardstock cardstock or even thick drawing paper like something like 200 gsm and above those are fine too they would work okay and part of the reason for that is you don't want the ink to travel behind okay you will see this and you don't want this ink to get onto the back of this side because if it does then it will show onto the other side of the drawing and then you will have a problem okay in this case this didn't happen here so thankfully all right so without further ado i am going to show you the entire video of how i did it even though i recorded only partially because i decided halfway through that i think i should record this whole process of when i was doing it and in case anybody was interested to try it okay so I would let the video play now. So if you have any questions, please leave comments in the YouTube, or you can go on to the Facebook group page and ask me those questions. All right, I will have a links of everything that I use here in the description of this video and you can decide if you want to purchase anything from there all right
Thank you. 